Monday! John Bolger with Premier Guitar. Today we're doing a first look at the Gibson Double Cutaway Standard from their custom shop. This is a very cool brand new design. And we're taking a first look at it right now, Chris Keys. What do you think about that? I love it. I love it! Tell me about it. Well, let me tell you about it. First of all, you might notice there's a whole bunch of frets on here. 24, I believe. These medium jumbles. Uh, it's a. Here's where it gets really interesting. Um, this really long neck. That's why I wanted to do that trippy dippy um, Beatles, you know, 50 anth 50th anniversary of Sgt. Pepper's. Uh, Within You, Without You, George Harrison, probably maybe my favorite Beatles song. I think it's the first world music ever, right? Maybe? No, on a great scale, or on a greater scale, yeah, or on a global scale, I should say. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so singing so musicologists can look into that. Anyway, good for this song. It, this is a good guitar for that song because you've got all this neck, and you can comfortably get way up, way up there, which you're hard-pressed to do on a lot of other guitars. A lot of neck here, and the neck is really cool. Let's start with this. Can you see that, Chris Keys? Yes, right sir. There? Now, in the 70s, um, Gibson came up with the Volute back there. Uh, and some people weren't crazy about it, but it added a little stability. So what they did, this is not a Volute, but it's actually the headstock. It's been carved down. So I think there's probably a big old chunk of wood that they just carved down like that. And that adds so much stability. This is the... They told me that at the at the factory, literally they had guys stand on this thing trying to break it. Like it'll withstand 200 pounds. I'm not going to do that here. I'm just not going to do that. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but I'm told uh, that this will withstand all of that. So very cool. It is the most stable guitar uh, they've ever made. So great for you road dogs out there that tend to abuse your instruments a bit just you know or if you stand on them a yeah lot. or if you stand, you stand great for you people that like to stand your guitars uh <laughs> it's ideal for that next bit um long tenons so you've got you've got that neck going into the going in here but it's i guess ergonomically friendly you don't have a big chunk of wood right here you've got a nice sleek line in and plenty of access and uh, the, as I said, the tenons are running long on this, which is kind of a coveted trait in, in older Les Pauls. So that's pretty great. Uh, belly cut right here. It's very comfortable. Mahogany body, maple top, which is kind of that standard that, you know, that Les Pauls are, are known for. Just a great wood combination. And with the gold, uh, people might be wondering with the visual here, if it oh, is yeah. carved, it is slightly, right? Oh, yeah, you yeah, know, absolutely. There's a carved top on this. The, um, the gold makes it a little more subtle, but they have a sunburst version of this. And then the, car the carving really pops. It's a little more subtle like this. Tunematic stop tailpiece. The pickups are these 57 classics, and Gibson really, I mean, they did it right. They, they had a ton of people come in and play them, and they tried all their different pickups, and these are the ones that, that won, won the, you know, the in-house shootout of everything I tried. Um, let's see, other, okay, my one glitch with this guitar is they use their old school tiny buttons, which, you know, I get it that this is a really strong neck, but man, I would put some bigger ones on. I put the, you know, the uh, the Grosch beer thing on there to hold it in place, but but it makes me a little nervous. <laughs> so Gibson, that's the one thing I would change. I would put a damn proper strap button on there. I know you've been using these since the 50s, but there's been a lot of guitars neck, guitar necks broken since the 50s, so I would make it slightly bigger if it was me. Um, so Gibson is in a, they're in a tough position because they are known for this classic design, the Les Paul, of course, 335. Um, SGs are a little, they're out there, but, but at this point, these are all classic designs. So when they vary from that, they get a lot of, they get a lot of naysayery. 
pushback. Uh, yeah, a lot of pushback, you know. But man, think about those guys. The think about those people who who took a chance and bought like an Explorer or a Flying B when they came out in was it fifty seven or fifty eight? Fifty eight, LA fifties. Fifty eight. I mean, think about that. Everyone's like, and that's the ugliest thing they've ever seen. Some people bought it, and now it's a half million dollar guitar. So I don't know, man. Um, this might be the game. This might be. This might become the most you know, one of those wildly coveted instruments. We'll have to. We'll have to check back. Let's check back in sixty years. <laughs> let's okay. make a date. Yeah, let's meet right here in make... sixty years. Yeah, <laughs> Gibson, you should probably give me this guitar, <laughs> and we'll and we'll check back on that and see what uh, see what it's worth. But you know, you don't know. It might be the thing. So why don't I just? Uh, I'll just. I've been yakking. I'll just play a little bit. You can see what it sounds like. Um, right now, I'm running through this valve train amp, which is just a real straight tube um, tube amp. That's what it sounds like. I got my pedal board here, but um, right now it's, I'm not doing anything. It's all kind of dry. I'll put a little reverb on, just because I like reverb. So, so this is this is just basically going straight in. A little bit of verb. Here's what these pickups sound like. You know those 57 classics, man, they do have a nice kind of pop to them. Yeah. Love the neck sound. They sound to my ear in the, in the room uh, kind of responsive too, pretty dynamic for how you're attacking it. Totally, totally. You know, you can... Do it. Let's see. Let's engage. <laughs> dirt. Engage the dirt. Okay, so here's a cool thing. Uh, turn on that dirt. Keep your volume down. Tone, because uh, in the heat of battle, it's 
it's hard to get it's you can get kind of lost like which one is it <laughs> uh so i like that that kind of takes away that mistake in fact one of my one of my les pauls i switched it i went with a master and a master and i use these two as like a coil tap thing mm -hmm. i was I, I don't know what it's doing right now, but I, I, at one point, I'm always jacking with my <laughs> stuff. So at one point I had that and it worked. It, I liked it. I, I didn't make that mistake of, of turning up the wrong one or flipping the switch and having one off accidentally. So pretty handy. Um, the switch down here too, the pickup selector, I don't mind it down there. I mean, you know, a lot of the strats and tellies are down there. Uh, I know the standard Les Paul thing is up there. I like that, but I get used to it down there. 335s are down there, so it's mm -hmm. not, not a big change. Uh, some people might get a little pushback on that, but it doesn't bother me. <laughs> uh, other bits, I don't know, you got the old, still, old school Grovers, looks like. You know, I got a couple, uh, couple Grovered out guitars, so I, that's pretty cool. That, I mean, that's, that's the basics. They really kind of, they took some chances and came up with a cool guitar. The, um, uh, it, it's a little getting used to, it's a long neck, right? Uh -huh. I mean, it's just. It looks long, so, but it, it's still standard Gibson, right? Yeah, yeah, standard Gibson, Gibson uh, approach. Uh, so those are the basics. So we're going to have a full review demo later on, but for now, this will get you started. Let's drum machine this thing. Oh, yeah!